Hello and welcome to another episode in the Godot Basics tutorial series. In this episode, we will be taking a look into the Input Event class. In the previous episode, we talked about the input propagation. Now, to recap with a short summary, let's say our scene tree has 10 nodes and all the nodes have input and unhandled input events. Well, what we do is one, we call all 10 nodes and we call their input events. And then after all 10 have been called and after all the input virtual methods have been called, we then move on to, in this case, unhandled input event. And then we call all 10 nodes and that's basically it. In this case, we make 20 calls in total, 10 calls input event, one call for each node and 10 calls for unhandled input event, one call for each node. But the thing I glossed over in last episode was the input event class. As a matter of fact, all input events, or rather all input virtual methods, pass you, the programmer, an event, but it just so happens to be an input event. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So what exactly is an input event? Well, an input event is just a class. As a matter of fact, it is the base class for all sorts of input data. When dealing with inputs, Godot does basically magic under the hood, but basically what Godot does is it converts the user's input data and passes down a specific class to your input virtual method. And that class holds relevant data that you can use and interpret in order to do some action. For example, when a user presses a button, you may want to act upon that. And so as a matter of fact, the good so engine provides you with the input event class and the input event class has subclasses and depending on the user input Godot will pass you a very specific subclass that inherits from the input event class. I'm going to try something different in this episode. I'm going to look at the API. As a matter of fact, I'm going to post the API down in the description down below so you can take a look at all the different classes that Godot passes to you. And I recommend taking a look at that because when you're building your game, you may want to use some specific type of user input in order for your game to work. For example, maybe your game only works on controller or mouse and keyboard. However, it's always a good idea to look at the API to see what Godot is able to provide you. And we're going to go over that together in this episode. We're going to do something different. We're just going to look at the API. Especially as a beginner, you may find it troubling to look at the API. You may feel intimidated, but in this episode, I will guide you on how to read the API. In this case, we're going to work together to see how to handle keyboard inputs. So let's begin. So again, we're in the input event class. We can see what we're inheriting from. As a matter of fact, our input event inherits from the resource class which is also a reference. And on top of that, input event has subclasses. Now, even though we have a lot of subclasses and we have some pretty cool things, like for example, MIDI, and we also have, for example, touch events for iPhones, for example, which would be the input event screen touch. In this episode, I just want to focus on three subclasses. The first two, the joypad button and the joypad motion, we will deal at the end of the episode, but we'll go over it briefly. However, as a beginner, you're most likely going to work with input event with modifiers subclass. And that's because the input event with modifiers subclass deals with keyboards, mouses, and if you're using a laptop, your trackpad. So let's take a look at the input event with modifiers class. Now, if you go on the API and you actually click on input event with modifiers, you'll be taken to the input with modifiers page, API page, and you're gonna see that you inherit from input event, but you also have three subclasses, input event gestures, input event key, and input event mouse. Input event gesture is trackpad gestures. Input event mouse is basically mouse input, such as clicking and scrolling the scroll wheel on your mouse. And input event key is basically keyboard input, basically button presses. However, in this episode, we're only going to focus on the input event key. So on your API page, you go ahead and click here. And we're gonna be taken to the API page of our input event key class. And you're going to see two things, properties and methods. We can ignore methods and most of the properties. In this case, we just want to know when a player or user has 
pressed a specific key. If you want to know or react upon a user pressing a specific key, such as moving right with the right arrow key or moving right with the letter D, then what we're going to look into is the property called scan code. And so you're going to go ahead and click scan code. We're going to be taken down in the same page. We're not changing pages. However, you're going to see scan code. And there are two things you're going to notice with your API, a setter and a getter. Setter sets a value for us at this point in time that is completely useless. However, we're more interested in the getter function. And the getter function lets us know that in order to receive a value, the scan code value, which is an integer value, we have to use the get scan code method. Now towards the bottom, you're going to see something and it's going to tell you the key scan code, which corresponds to one of the key list constants. And that's the most important thing in the input event key class is the key list. So you're going to go ahead and click key list. And when you do, we're going to be taken to a different page and it's called the key list global enums. Now Godot provides us with singletons and global enums, and the key list happens to be one of those global enums. As a matter of fact, this is how we can tell what a user press. For example, if the user press the at key, the integer value being returned by get scan code will be 64. If the user presses the letter A on the keyboard, the integer value being returned by the get scan code function slash method will be 65. And it's a list and it's a big extensive list. And this gives us complete control over how we can react to certain player inputs in the keyboard. And as a beginner, you're going to most likely just react to keyboard inputs. And that's why I wanted to make this episode. OK, so moving on, we have our global enums. However, let's say for our game, we just want to move right. We want to do something when the player presses the right button and the right button key right is just that right arrow key. Now, the integer value being passed is this long integer value one six seven 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 two three three. And it even tells you right arrow key. So let's go ahead and create our function. So in the last episode, we have the input. Now for key presses, it would be unhandled input. But for this basic game, it really doesn't matter where. However, I would recommend to put it in the unhandled key input. But I wanted to show you how we would handle key presses if we put our code inside the input virtual method. OK, so we have the event parameter, which Godot is passing us an input event class. The input event class can be anything. It could be a joystick. It could be a trackpad. It could be button, mouse, MIDI, touch screen, etc. However, when we receive the event, we need to filter it. We need to basically tell Godot that we don't care about the other events. As a matter of fact, we need to tell it that if what we're receiving in the event is an input event key class that we can go ahead and run specific code. However, if the event happens to be, for example, a joystick class, then just go ahead and print that to the screen. In your production game, you're not going to do anything. As a matter of fact, this code I'm going to upload to GitHub for you to play around with. OK, so how do we filter what class we're receiving from Godot in the event parameter? Well, first we use an if statement if our event is an input event key. And basically what that means is if the event happens to be the class input event key, we're going to go ahead and run our code. Now, when we run this first line of code, event could be Q, W, E, 1, 2, 3, etc. However, we only care about one specific key, which is the right arrow key. And so because of that, we need to write a second if statement. And so we say if our event dot get scan code is equivalent to 16777233, which is the integer value for the right arrow key, we are going to print to screen right key press. And there is, in fact, an easier way to handle key inputs. And we're going to look at that at a later episode. However, if you wanted to get down and dirty with code, this would be the way to do it. However, we can make this easier because we don't need this integer value. And so instead of the integer value, we can replace it with the enum value. And if we go back, our enum value was key underscore right all capital. So remember, it's case sensitive, these global enums. So as you can see here, none of the code has changed. However, instead of using the raw integer value, we instead use the 
enum name. And this code will do the same thing. If we press the right keyboard, we're going to print to screen right key press, else if it's any other value, it's going to be printing to our console. However, there is a third way, and it's not apparent when you read the API documentation, if you follow it along with this episode. However, if you read other code in the Godot documentation, you may see something like this, event.scancode. Event.scancode is exactly the same as event.getscancode, and really we're still getting that integer value that Godot is passing to us. So Godot again is passing us an event, whether that's mouse movement or joypad button pressing. And then our first if statement filters because we only care about the input event key class. And then in the input event key class, we only care about the specific scan code of the key right or the right arrow key being pressed. And as a matter of fact, event.scan code is another way to do get underscore scan code. So get underscore scan code, event.scan code. And then after, if this passes, we print to the screen. And as you can see here, no matter which way you write your code, we're going to print to the screen when we press the right arrow key, right key pressed. And then when I move my mouse, for example, like this, you're going to see this input event mouse motion. And that's basically the else statement. So again, input event mouse motion is the else statement. And that's, or rather, this is one way that we can write input detection from the player. And this is only specific to key presses. We can get as complex as we want to, or we can make it easier on ourselves. And we'll look at that at a later episode. Because as a matter of fact, Godot allows us to use the project settings to set our own key input mappings. So lastly, let's take a look at controllers. Um, I received maybe two questions about controllers and it's fairly straightforward. However, it's a little complex if you don't know how to look. I certainly did not know where to look when I started with Godot. So basically controllers will include PS4 controllers, Xbox, Steam controllers, etc. I'm not sure about how PS4 works. Um, at least for me, three years ago, it required, at least for my computer, a plugin. I had to download that, which the computer would handle the conversion. But I do know for Xbox and Steam controllers, um, plug and play is supported. I may be wrong. If I'm wrong, please post something in the comment section down below. However, when you're dealing with controllers, there are two classes we need to look at. Input event joypad button and input event joypad motion. The button handles button presses on your controller and then the joypad motion handles basically your joysticks. And so as a matter of fact, if you connect to your computer and you run this code, you're going to see these classes being called in the print statement for the else statement. So go, again, go ahead, download that from GitHub and play around with different controllers. Perhaps plug in your MIDI keyboard. Anyway, moving on. Something you may not know as a beginner, especially if you're a beginner, is that not all controllers are supported by Godot. For example, when I use my NVIDIA controller on Mac OS, the left trigger and right trigger buttons do not work, but everything else is fine. And that's just because there's so many controllers and so many different operating systems and devices that Godot doesn't have them all or needs to update certain things. And so in order to see if your controller is compatible with Godot, I'm going to post a link down below. And it's basically going to be a list that lets you know which controllers work with which devices. We won't go into too much detail about controllers in this episode. However, just keep that in mind. Not all controllers will work for every operating system. However, if you know what you're doing, and I plan on doing this later in the future, is that you can submit something, very simple mapping, that lets Godot know which device you're using on which controller, or rather, there's a way to submit. I won't go too much into submission, so if you, for example, download the GitHub file and you play around with your controllers and it doesn't work, check the link down below because it may not be your programming skills, it may just be that Godot doesn't support your controller with your specific device slash operating system. Well, that's all I have for you in this episode. Again, if you're a beginner, don't forget to download the GitHub file and play around with input controls or input event controls. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me in this episode. Thank you for clicking the subscribe button. Thank you for clicking the like button. I truly appreciate your support. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the comments section down below. And I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Have an amazing day.